So I guess we can start. Um, so the last day, uh, the last talk of the day, I guess everyone is tired. So and yet one more distribution on risk five. So we're going to talk about Fedora and risk five. Um, David Abdurakmanov, um, independent software engineer. So that means I, I'm not employed by Red Hat. I'm not employed by Sci-Fi. So and I'm leading the Fedora risk five. So for the last year, basically it was a full-time uh, endeavor. Um, so before we go into the talk, let's, let's do a few questions. So do we have people who are running Fedora or used to run Fedora? Can you raise your hands? Nice, very nice. Okay, do you have people who used to run or still run Reddit Enterprises or CentOS? It's very nice. Do we have people who do not know what Series 5? Okay, that sounds good. Um, so we're going to look into basically three parts. So the first part, again, how we bootstrap a new distribution, a new brand new architecture. I guess you can kind of go very fast on that because if you watch the Debian talk or if you haven't, please go and watch the Debian talk where there's very nice and detailed descriptions of what the Debian did, what is the risk 5 and the whole history. Basically, 94 plus percent of that talk directly applies to Fedora and probably other distributions also. So that, let's start talking about how you build. So Fedora and basically every distribution, it's a natively built, so we don't do a cross compilation, which probably is what you do when you're using a, a open embedded or build root. So most software is going to be written for the native design, so no one intended to be cross compiled. So if you want to do a cross compilation, if for new architecture you need to probably port it, you probably need to have a custom environment, scripting to do a cross compilation. That takes a lot of time. Um, and then you, there are some pieces of software which try to cross compile and we're going to attempt to run itself or some utilities. Um, and you're probably going to need to hack that software to get it cross compiled for the new architecture. And then finally, you know, uh, you're probably not going to have a very strong hardware at the beginning. Um, and you're probably going to use simulation. So at this point, for at least for the uh, risk 5 QM is actually a strong target. You can even run on full eight cores. That's very nice. So it's very good to build the whole uh, Fedora stack and probably other distributions. Um, so it's a bit chicken and egg problem. So again, Fedora is built on top of the previous version of Fedora. So if you don't have that for the risk 5 so we need to get to that. And the way to do that is basically build a very minimal root file system. It's not going to look like Fedora. It's going to be very hacked. But basically, it needs to have a tool chain with minimal bits, some form of a kernel with some features. And it needs to have Fedora packaging tools. And then we can start putting in the sources and trying building their PMs. So basically, the picture looks like that. We do it in stages. Um, so again, you, you build a uh, cross tool chain, then you take the tar balls and you build some form of a very minimal with a fast, which you can build, uh, which you can boot natively or under emulation. And again, it has the RPM tools, so you can start building an RPMs. So you're going to rebuild it. Um, in reality, when you think stage one, stage two, stage, you, you think it might be independent. It's not exactly the case. Sometimes you need to go back to the previous stage, enable more features. So it's kind of going back and forward sometimes to get all the features done so you can build a large set of RPMs and then for most RPMs you actually assemble the new root FS and you keep building on the new one and keep redoing that. So we have done all of that basically two and a, and a half years ago. We did, we did some of that again when we finally got the final agility version so the ABI is locked. Nothing is going to be changed. So it's finally we can build the last distribution. Uh, the last step, which was done basically almost a year ago, was moving to a Fedora infrastructure bit. So that is the Kaji infrastructure. So that means I'm talking to the Kaji, Kaji hub and web. I'm submitting the packages. Uh, there are, we have a lot of the QMU builders, and we have the boards. We are running Kaji D. Um, so it takes one of the package. It creates a, a pristine stage root environment exactly for that build. It builds a package, sends it back to the Kaji. Kaji does internal repositories, distro repositories, assembles disk images, and stuff like that. Um, so the first bootstrap, I believe, uh, was done. So Richard started the whole project, and he's sitting right where. 
Um, that was in 2016, August 10th, I believe, based on the blog post when he said that he has something which runs RPM build, and I think he announced that on the Fedora mailing list. And very quickly, me and Stefan, who's sitting right there, joined this effort. Um, so we have been working on this for a very long time. Uh, in 2016, uh, I think um, yeah, we already had the 5,000 packages. So that's like one quarter of Fedora at that point. Um, but yeah, let's move forward. Um, so Fedora is, of course, is upstream first po policy. So that means if you want to build a RISC V, all the changes we do, we have to go upstream and then we have to rebuild the whole thing. So we have to do not only release engineering infrastructure stuff, doing a lot of also porting. So a lot of things happened. The GCC happened, building that happens. They had to wait for a kernel. GLIPC was the last part. When that happened, we started going like mad to get it done. So we also had second and the first boost, third bootstraps, and the third one was the final one. Once we have done that, we actually move to the Kaji infrastructure. So that's, again, we in the Kaji, that means we're building the package in the same way that the Fedora official is doing. But this alternative architecture, so it's not using the official infrastructure, uh, we're using a separate infrastructure. Um, so that's a very quick overview how we got to this point where we can actually boot something. So let's maybe look at how does it look in real life. It's, you know, one thing is to build something, get the console maybe, Maybe it looks like a Fedora, like a distro, but you know, what can you do? It, or how does it look in real life? I think so. The first time Fedora booted was in sci fi offices in, in California. I think that was in the, at the end of the March in last year. So that's first time Fedora 28. It's not exactly Fedora 28, because what we did was we built, I think, 24 on top, 20, then 25, 26, 28. So it's kind of a hybrid something which kind of is 28 at that point. So that's a board, Sci-Fi Unleashed board with FPGA, and again that's a screenshot from the display. Later, I think a month after, we started getting the board, so the Sci-Fi actually were uh, donating the boards for various projects. So Richard got one, he got also another one uh, from crowdfunding, so we got two boards. Uh, DJ from Red Hat got another one for Gilipsy, which you also use for Fedora and um, also using for kernel stuff. Um, so this is probably the most expensive way you can attach SSD to the system. That's probably five or six thousand dollars just to attach SSD. Uh, the other boards that uh, Richard is running, we're running MBD, um, and we do not use SSD cards because those are crappy on the board. <laughs> And then Atis from Western Digital came in and said and wanted to try something. And he had the micro semi board, so that means you can actually get the USBs, you can have the SSDs, you can get the, you can get the graphical cards. And I started working on the uh, GNOME desk, I think, when I visited uh, sci fi offices. So it was like six months passed since that time. And I think I told Atis it's not going to work. It's definitely not going to work. And surprisingly, it did work. The only thing that we struggled was to figure out what you, do you need to enable on the kernel to get the mouse and the keyboard. And that took like a week to figure out. Other than that, it did work. So this is the first picture of Adish actually booting in a sci-fi with a micro semi. And that's GNOME desktop, the same stuff that's running on this laptop, basically. Um, and also, Adish did more demos in various conferences. So we have... Uh, 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 Fedora 29 running a NAS demo. Here's a media server demo. So it's basically not exactly the toy, so you don't need to go to the console. If you have the hardware, you can actually run real stuff on it. So basically, um, you're not limited to something. So you, if you have a goal, if you want to do something on the boards, just you know, figure it out and then just try to get it running. It might work out of the box, like it happened with the, with the GNOME stuff, might not, but you, then you know, come to the channel, tweet me, or whatever, and we can figure out what's actually wrong. Um, another thing, so uh, Bellard, the same guy who actually, I think, invented QMU, um, he wrote an email, and he has another project called JS Linux. And if you go to the website, you actually can boot Fedora 29 in the command line. You can also boot in X11. And uh, by the way, the, the GNOME desktop, that's running Valand. But you also can do X11 in a browser. You don't need to install anything. 
Uh, the performance might be not exactly what you expect, but it actually works. And also we have a tiny move emulation. That's also the thing where you, you can actually boot the door in a graphical user interface. Um, not exactly at the current versions, things have been changed. Uh, we need to bit the adjustment of, for example, the, uh, the BBL and the kernel itself are now separate. And also you cannot specify the init RD for the tiny move, but that's at some point supposed to be happening. <laughs> So let's go in the current state. What's, what, what I did and what's probably is very wrong, especially if you're a Fedora user, and you probably not want to hear what I'm going to tell uh, in the next slides. So I would build farm. So again, we have three boards, the so uh, three physical targets, a couple X8664 uh, nodes for running Kaji, Kaji Hub, Kojiras, the databases, various systemd stuff to use the schedule. Uh, we also have some backup solutions for running Ceph and Rustic to ensure that if by accident the server dies, we can recover. And we had to use that just after Christmas. Um, so originally, all our builders, the, the QMU stuff was running on the Richard server, private servers. Uh, we had only like eight, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we moved to a GCC compiling farm. So Facebook... Uh, Donated loads of servers, and we have, uh, I believe, eight of 16 core servers. And based on my assessment, we have about uh, 64, and we can add another 30 something QMU targets. Um, and the whole infrastructure at this point, all the QMUs, that's fully managed by libvirt. So, not running long QMU commands or anything like that. Uh, and also, everything we build, at least the disk images at this point and the repositories, are now fully mirrored to official Fedora infrastructure. So if this dies, you can take disk images, you can set up a new Kaji, you can import the whole stuff and just kickstart the new one. Um, yeah, and that's the URLs. And we have two streams, so I'm still building 29 and, and Fedora Rawhide. Rawhide is basically like a, a rolling release. And we're also discussing potentially doing CentOS 8, which is a bit more complicated, a lot more complicated at this point. Um, statistics. So I don't exactly like the numbers because numbers are constantly changing. But according to the Kaji, we had 24,000 successful builds and about 3,500 failed ones. Um, the best week in terms of builds, I did 4,500 successful builds per week. But again, I could do more. Uh, but what you don't do, and I'm going to be more slides about that, you don't run tests. And I do on other stuff. So basically, then we are running only on those eight machines. I had some hacks to ensure that we have loads of successful builds and you don't attempt something which is not successful and optimize for the speed. Um, and if you do a comparison for Fedora 30, which is a rawhide, so the first line is directly from our Kaji. The last two lines are from the official Kaji infrastructure. So we have more total packages at this point. So Fedora removed some. We still didn't catch up to that point. Uh, total build, if you look at the uh, ARCs and this one, it's actually smaller. But when I looked at uh, a dozen of the packages, apparently 29 and F30, we have packages added, which we never built. But there are plenty of them for some reason. And then again, RPMs, I mean, just asked for directly for the architecture and how much we have in RPMs, and then also including all the debug info and debug sources in general. Um, so the package, is a, if you have to think of package as a source RPM, and that source RPM produces artifacts which can be multiple of RPMs. For example, TextLive, that's delivering you like 6,000 of RPMs. A uh, certain root package delivers a bit more than 100 RPMs. And again, some of these packages might be in general exclusive architecture or something, or we might produce some sub packages or not based on architecture. So we counting exactly like I have like 100%, 95% for that architecture, for each architecture is a different number. You know, it's, so that's why I don't like exactly the statistics and numbers. We have lots of problems, uh, loads of them. We basically try, we are running on more than 10 year old machine, uh, which was donated. I mean, the whole infrastructure is fully donated. We don't, there's no big company kind of like pushing our money and, you know, 
to get it done. And we're trying, we're running basically everything on one single machine. Uh, at some point, we also even run the QMU instances on the same, our main server, which does everything. Uh, also, our domain ended up in HTTP, HTTP secure something something yeah, a, a preload list. And once it ends in that, basically says if you go to HTTP site, it, you automatically redirect to HTTPS, and you cannot a normal user cannot go to HTTPS because so that's self-signed certificate which we use to log into our cache infrastructure. So, so people complain that they cannot log in and get the disk images from our Kaji. So we are going to change the domain, so that's going to be fedora.risk5.rocks. So this is going to be very simple. Um, and we still have the boards and QMU failing. Uh, if I basically every day I have like two to three QMUs failing, that's basically CPU stalls. I don't know why exactly. The boards fail maybe, I don't know, once so in two months, in three months. Very rarely, but they still happen. Uh, and the whole infrastructure requires a lot of time and maintenance, so the more you do that, the less you can actually do on the porting, which is truly interesting part. So what's missing? Okay, so at this point, we do not sign any RPMs. Uh, that might be scary for some people. Uh, we could do that, but that probably has a big impact on IOs. And again, the server is not exactly handling the current situation. So I'm not doing that, but we could do that. We don't have a bod body. Uh, basically, body moves RPMs for different tags in the Kaji. So, for example, you build a package which lands in one tag, but someone needs to sign it, so you need to move it for different tags before it lands in the final repository. We don't need it. For, at this stage, we don't need it. We don't need it in a Punji. Uh, Punji is something which assembles the repositories and the disk images and everything else. Uh, we just use the basic Kaji stuff. It does exactly the same stuff. And we don't do default Fedora disk images, but, but we probably could do that. I don't see actually why not. Um, we don't do modularity support. Uh, I don't think a lot of people are using it at this point, but if you want to do CentOS, that's probably a requirement. <coughs> Modular, modularity basically means that you have a base OS, for example, and then if you want to have a different PHP version, you can just select a different stream, and, just, and that stream is independent from the uh, distribution lifecycle. Uh, we are going to do a similar thing with this RMV7. We don't support a bootloader specification, and it's basically because we're going to end up using uBoot at some point, which doesn't do that. You need to use grep2 grep for that, and there are patches for grep2, uh, but there is no uh, still missing parts in the kernel for doing e EFI. Um, it, and also, if you need to update the kernel, you can do. You can do DNF upgrade and everything is going to install, but it's not actually going to run it if you reboot it, because at this point, we're using a BBL, and the BBL comes with embedded kernel, so you need to power it down, copy a new BBL, and reboot the machine. And again, we, globally, we don't run any tests. Um, again, we have a lot more QMUs, so it means I can now start to sacrifice them, and I can then start running the tests, and I can do other stuff, which I didn't do before because I needed to optimize it for actually for throughput. Uh, custom bits. Um, we don't use Kaji Shadow. Basically, at this stage, we're supposed to use a Kaji Shadow. What it does, it just follows the official Kaji. If someone puts a build, it automatically goes to our infrastructure. It ran for half an hour, and I killed it because it tagged something from Fedora 12, and I wasn't happy because of that. So I have my own custom stuff, but it probably needs to be rewritten to do a correct, more correct thing. Um, again, we don't do git to source package. I do it on the x86 machine because it takes just two minutes to do that. It takes one hour, two hours. If we do on a QMU, that's like expensive thing. Uh, also, my script attempts to figure out if you have all the dependencies so we can build it. So more, we want to have more successful builds, not just to send builds which fail in two days and because we didn't have something. Um, yeah, and we have, uh, the, so all the source code for Fedora sits in what you call the disk git, which is basically a lot of uh, git repositories. Uh, and they have an overlay. So there are some patches which I'm not yet happy. I'm not, not in the Fedora. So I'm supposed to go to Fedora, plus there are pa just in general some ports. So I need to work on getting some of that in the Fedora 
probably some of that sending to upstream, and some of that never going to land anywhere because the official stuff is going to be is going to be different. Um, we do four separate disk images. Uh, if you don't know what you want, you probably want to go with this developer. That's one big image. Uh, still fits in the SD card. Yeah, um, it has everything. It's it's a Kaja builder. It has all the tools for RPMs. It has X11 minimal stuff. If you want to do uh, Flexbox, i3, awesome, all the Emacs, Vim, NeoVim, debuggers, all the tools I can figure out to debug L stuff, hex editors, compilers, working with disk images. It has a lot of stuff. Uh, it, if you get an image, the smaller image, and you do it enough, make hash. If your silicon is very weak, you might need to wait, wait some time, 10, 15, 20 minutes. If you need to do that a lot of times, you don't want to do that. Um, if you're a developer, and you want to use those disk images for your CI or something, and something is missing, but it's not like 200 megabytes or something, we can probably pull it in a developer image and you just you know, get it out of the box. You need it, you want to test it, download the image, you have your packages in it, and that's it. Uh, and I also had to change the scheduling because, again, we have problems with IOs and doing images are a very costly thing. So this is basically where you can get the images. Uh, the old one, stage four, that we did before going to Kaji is still, uh, still where you can boot them, and I know that some people are still using it. Uh, you can directly grab something for Kaji. Uh, those are untested, so there might be some issues because, you know, it's automatic. Uh, and for the root file system, you need to use uh, VDA1 because there is one partition. I cannot uh, actually not, to, I have to make one partition it's required the way it's built. But if you use the, one, the new ones, uh, they, I kind of select and test. So I'm going to boot them a few times. I'm going to do some, I'm going to enable AC Linux. I'm going to do KMU libver basically. I know that they work to some extent. The targets we actually support, so again, it's a KMU, uh, libver KMU. A tiny move, but again, that needs a bit of modifications, and the, you, all, you can also run it on the, on the boards. And again, as at, you, can, you saw the pictures from Atish presentations, and some people are running it, but uh, it doesn't run upstream kernel. A year passed, it still doesn't support the hardware. I don't know how many drivers are missing. Yeah, a few. Yeah, so I guess a few more months also needed to get that in, hopefully. But I guess that's 2019 material. It's going to happen. Uh, so, uh, uh, and you don't have, for the latest images, we don't have kernel builds for that. So if you're running on the board, come to our IC channel and then ask for that explicitly. Probably Atish has a tree or something that you can pull and, and run. Once people have now trees with those five or six driver patterns. A few maybe annoying things about Risk Five in general. So the same thing that happens with the 64-bit ARM, make sure that your config scripts are up to date. The last time we were modified was uh, just several months ago, basically, uh, six months ago. Um, RIS-5 only does the word size atomics. That means uh, there is a hack, basically, in the, in the GCC. If you use a minus P thread, then there is a lib spec which is going to say, as needed, link with atomics and then you don't gonna have any issues, but majority of the case is gonna be minus LP thread, which works on mo most common architectures, but not on all the architectures. But because that min minus P thread might be, uh, I don't know, some, is, some architectures like minus, uh, it's actually P threads, I believe. So yeah, uh, I think there's a bug report, and I think there's the idea to inline those atomic calls, but no one has time to implement that. And I guess there are only two people who might do that. It would be Jim and Palmer. Yeah. Uh, another thing that we recently found uh, when I debugged a D language, so D front and final end in the GCC, but we had some problems, was dynamic sections has to be read only. But that's not the case. As far as I know, as far as the Jim comment, that's a direct copy pass from a MIPS. And does not apply to RIS-5, even if, if a comment says that it applies. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, so I hopefully you're going to send the patch to GLIPC. Yeah, we'll GLIPC is on frozen now, so it makes sense. Yeah. And another thing is you might think it's 
slash user slash lib64. It's not. Even if we, we are not multi-lib, Fedora, uh, uh, Fedora RISC V is not a multi-lib, but the way the natural RISC V works, it's going to work as a multi-lib. So in reality, what the linker is going to expect is lib64 slash an ABI. We have sim links, so the old way is still working, so it's somewhat compatible, but in general, on RISC V, it's like a different situation. And there's a load of plans. So we have a new main server, so it's slightly better hardware. Um, so Polymer finally sent a uh, pull request to kernel. So 5.0 RCT got my audit support. So that's in the kernel, it's working. Uh, the usage space is posted, but not yet merged. I have a second patch. I know that it works, but it's not yet in the kernel. Probably maybe in the next version we could managed to get it done. Uh, the DLang works uh, in the one in the GCC, but I still work in upstream the patches. So again, I need to send a lot of changes from our disk git uh, overlay to either upstream or to Fedora disk git. Um, we still don't have ADA support in the GCC, so that's probably going to be a next thing to add. And then look into the Haskell compiler and the free Pascal, enable the tests, enable building all, uh, building uh, from Git source packages, improving the shadow Kaja functionality, <coughs> dumping BBL and going with OpenSBI in the U-boot, maybe XT Linux, um, and also Alistair recently joined the Fedora's 5 channel and he asked you know, to do more testing for QMU, so also looking into building QMU daily, nightly builds for CentOS and the Fedora uh, on the Intel architectures on also in the RIS-5 because there is a TTG backend for RIS-5, so basically you can emulate Intel on RIS-5, I think. Yeah. And we could maybe do a demo in three minutes. I know, do you see? So this is my, so from the way to use, I suggest to use libvirt because I think it's much more easier than actually running a QMU. This is command from the wiki. So we're going to copy it. And so I'm not, I, I don't have anything running. I don't have any VMs. But I do have the images downloaded. So I'm going to create a VM. <coughs> so that should be running already. Yes. I probably cannot. <laughs> okay, so we connected to the console. For some reason, the latest BBL takes some time before it boots, but it's booting. Um, so let's hope it boots fast. <coughs> Try turning off the lights if you want. I have no idea which one it is. Nope. Oh, that's nice. So another interesting thing, why right, it's still booting, I, what I would suggest to use, serial log file. So again, our QMUs are dying, usually the CPU stalls, but there are other bugs. I highly suggest enable that, because if something happens and you cannot log into a system, there is a serial log, and you're probably going to find a kernel crash or something, so you can send. So I highly suggest you to run that, and it's still booting. No, I'm not, in, I'm probably not interested in that. Okay, so it is RIS-5. Nice. Actually, I think there's one bug in the kernel. So MMU SV48, the kernel doesn't support, the kernel doesn't support yeah, that. Like I that. did yeah. on the mailing list, yeah. but no one replied. I didn't, I looked at it, I think you're right. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, the, it's supposed to come just 
It, it goes from DTB. DTB says it and just prints uh, the one. So, so what we're going to do, if we're going to have time. So this is a D language. I'm not a D language user very much, but I still debug the thing. And maybe one thing that we can change is go back to Intel. There's if uh, get the VP move to something better than a console. Because now we should have at least colors. Yes, that looks nicer. So you see, so we can compile it. So that's uh, in the GCC nine again. We have a D front end, which almost works by default. It's not yet enabled in upstream, but you have all the patches to understand what's happening. So we're gonna figure out before the GCC nine is released. So we're gonna compile a word count, which basically is WC command in the D language. It's gonna take a bit, a few seconds, I guess, like 20 seconds or something. Um, yeah, so that's a new language. Nice. And so what we can do, so again, that that's, seems correct, I guess. And that's also correct. 20 lines, 48 words. Yeah, it works. So that's a D application running on the Fedora 30 raw height on RISC-5, the GCC9, which I think no one yet has. Also, there was a talk from Debian. Debian said that uh, the GDB doesn't work on the Linux. So, so let's do the same. This is a GDB. So backtrace, uh, this, I always make a mistake. How many? <laughs> just four. Just four. Yeah, so you can disassemble, you can do the registers. Yes. So what happens with Fedora Rawhide, which again is the rolling, you get the latest kernel. The kernel is rebuilt basically a few times a week. Even between the RCs, you get uh, the GDB bumps every week, every two weeks, the same as the GCC, uh, and a few other bits. So it's, I mean, if you want to have a bleeding edge, it's in the Fedora Rawhide. If you don't want to wait for release a few months, it's in here. GLPC is also bumped every, at least a week, uh, bi-weekly. Um, and it's a kitchen sink. So the developer image is a kitchen sink. And if something is missing and you need it for demos or development because you want to depend on that, again, go to Fedora's five channel or something, tell us what's wrong, and you're probably going to put it in. It's basically, again, it's a one big integration for the upstream. Uh, and that, I think, uh, yeah. So these are the companies that basically are the most important. So there's Tranquility, there's our main infrastructure. Facebook gave us the servers. Open Source Lab in Oregon, I believe, is hosting a hardware. GC Compile Farm is now host, is managing that hardware. Sci-Fi did the boards and delivered to the developers. And our latest and greatest uh, uh, major new server is also going to be hosted by Academic Computing Club in Umeo University. So hopefully that new server is going to handle the load better. And again, if you have any questions or you're missing something or something is not working on the test something, whatever questions you have, risk five or not, you can go to the Fedora is five. You're going to find people from uh, Sci-Fi. There's a Polymer. There's a Jim. There's a DJ from Gilipsy. There's Alistair now. Uh, we have a Debian guys. We have uh, uh, Parabola GNU Linux. We have Open Mandriva guys sitting. So we have a lot of guys from all the places, so like almost 40 guys. And if you have a question, there's a risk five. You're most likely going to get an answer in that channel. So that's, that's it. <laughs>